46,000 mines were buried on a large beach. More than 20 guys manually defused the bombs. If you make a mistake, you will be blown to pieces. The Second World War finally ended in 1945. But for many, it was only the beginning. A military truck was loaded with about 20 German prisoners of war. The prisoners were all 16 or 17 years old. They're here for one reason and one reason only, to carry out manual mine clearance. Tens of thousands of mines that the Germans left along the Danish coastline to prevent the Allies from landing in World War II. Just like the Germans in World War II. After the victory, the Danish army did not treat these boys as human beings. First they were trained to clear mines. After the instructors taught the basic principles of mines, everyone had to practice with real mines. They had to first unscrew the cap of the mine. Then they had to carefully remove the core of the mine. Everyone took turns to train. But if anyone makes a mistake, there is no chance of survival. Just now there have been two explosions. In the opinion of the Danish officers, they don't deserve sympathy. Even if they're a bunch of kids, they thought that the best punishment for the defeated prisoners of war was to pay in blood. Next they were shipped straight to the beach. Everyone lined up in the hot sun. The officers shouted for everyone to count. All the questions were answered with a standard answer. Yes sir, it's like the beginning of the movie. We are not friends with the Germans. And we are not equals. The only thing you are here to do is to redeem yourselves for the crimes you have committed. So they had to manually disarm tens of thousands of mines without any protective gear. If the demolition goes well, it can be done in three months. But the process must not be a step wrong. Otherwise, they would be blown to pieces. They lie on the ground in the hot sun. They use tiny sticks to repeatedly poke into the beach and look for mines. Each person is responsible for an area. When they find a mine, they dismantle it manually. And as soon as any area is confirmed safe, it must be marked. The only happiness they feel is that they don't have to work at night. So they could lie in bed and rest. But the most painful thing was the lack of food in Denmark after the war. The soldiers didn't have enough food to give to the prisoners. In other words, the prisoners only worked but did not get enough food to eat. Finally a boy who could not stand the hunger sneaked into a neighbor's house not far away at night. He saw some grain by the pigpen so he stole it and gave it to the people. However, the next day everyone had vomiting and diarrhea. A guy who was draining a mine was vomiting so much that it triggered the mine. With the sound of the explosion, his hands were directly blown away. He cried out in despair, Mom, I want to go home. It turns out that people of all nationalities are the same. In the face of great suffering, people still think of their mothers and their homes. But unfortunately, he could never go back. He was taken to the hospital before he died. The investigation revealed that they had eaten food with a lot of red droppings the night before. It's a wonder they didn't get poisoned after eating that in the dark. The seemingly vicious sergeant, Carl gradually became kinder to the prisoners as he got along with them. He thought the prisoners were just children, the Nazis were at fault, but these children were not guilty of any crime on the battlefield. So sergeant, Carl used to sneak them some food, he even played soccer with them on the beach in his free time. But happiness is always short-lived, there are always accidents in life. On the way home after playing soccer, sergeant, Carl's dog, which he had owned for years, was killed in a bombing on a beach that had already been checked? This means that the beach is not safe, even though it has been cleared of mines. So Sergeant, Carl blamed himself for being too nice to them, and changed his attitude drastically. The next day everyone gathered, then they formed a long line, arm in arm. The Poles walked over and over again through each area that had been cleared, and continued the manual dumbing process, until a little girl stumbled into the danger zone. A few German boys didn't care about the mines in front of them and rescued her from danger. In fact, all of us are the same. If we see someone in trouble, we can help. We don't care what nationality or race they are. And it was these actions that changed Sergeant Carl's perspective forever. He wanted these children to leave Denmark alive. But it was often not to be until the final demeaning job was over. More than 20 boys joined. But after a few months, only four of them left alive. But instead of going back to their home country, they went back to the mine-ridden beaches. They were told to go back to Germany after demeaning. But the order was very simple and ruthless. The only reason was that the four men who were alive had a lot of experience in demeaning. That's how it is in war. Human life is always cheap. Life is just a tool to serve the target. How many people have died in the course of war? How many families are broken is not their concern. 
The only thing they have to do is to accomplish the goal at all costs, not to mention the cost of a group of prisoners of war. No matter how you consider this condition is too worthy. What is the conflict between saving one person and saving the world? Who is more valuable in the public interest or self-life? I don't know what people think. I can't answer how to choose when I'm in this situation, but I believe that human life should be priceless. It is not a commodity that can simply be added up. In the end, Sergeant Carl was faced with the same problem. He wanted to save these children, but the order was that the children had to be taken to another beach. Maybe it's true that they're going to another beach would have been less of a sacrifice. But in the end, Sergeant Carl made his choice. Sergeant Carl drove the car halfway to the border and secretly released the children. Perhaps he was also tired after this incident. Then let him use the warmth of emotion to respond to the value of maximum rationality. After all, many times human life cannot be measured in money. The lives of all people are also very precious.